right, gents. Sean back at it again. Hey, um, today I'm going to try to do this valve job, uh, valve check, <clears throat> um, checking the clearance on the on the shims. Figured I'd walk around the shop a little bit. I've uh, been cleaning it up for the past all weekend, really. It was a mess. And plus, I've been procrastinating, honestly. It's Sunday, um, March, whatever, 15th, 16th, whatever. I don't know. I've been procrastinating on this thing, so let me walk you around a little bit. Uh, I got the bike all set up, ready to take, start stripping it down to, to get to the engine. So, so I got all my tools set up here. Um, already started taking off some of the plastics. Got my torque wrench out there. Got my feeler gauges in that tusk bag there. Uh, got my glasses because I'm blind as a bat. Uh, flashlights are all set up. Toolbox is over here. Kind of messy still. There's all my Moscow gear and all the luggage and crap like that. There's some miscellaneous camping gear down here. I'm standing in my own light here. Um, this area was a mess. We had a bunch of construction materials uh, over here. I put those up in the attic. And then uh, the Harley's sleeping. And then... Uh, just over here, I bought a burn barrel uh, from a guy up the street. Was selling them, fifteen bucks. So I'm gonna burn some leaves and stuff and clean up the yard at some other point. In the, in the trash can. Anyway, there's the uh, stereo and all that. So I'm ready to go. I've got my shop manual over here too. But uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm ready to go. I think, maybe. Anyway, it's not gonna be a how-to video. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following the manual. And some videos so don't count on me but i'll show you what i can uh, i'm going to follow a video tim two wheels did uh, he did a two-part series on this is very very detailed very very good plus the shop manual so what could go wrong right <laughs> we'll see all right so i got the uh plastics all off i'm gonna go ahead and work on getting this valve cover off got a pool some of these vent hoses off <clears throat> and start unbolting it. I'm looking in the spark plug there, it looks pretty decent. Um, gotta get this temperature sensor off. Put some light on that. There you go, the temperature sensor. It's gotta come out of there too. Uh, just getting started, good boy. All right, so things are going pretty good. I've got all the wires off. I've got the bracket for the breather hose out. I've actually loosened the head bolts. Hold my flashlight with my mouth. Sorry about that. Got all the valve cover head uh, bolts, valve cover bolts loosened. Uh, I'm just going to wipe this down real quick with the rag again um, and go ahead and pull those off. I made a little template here. So, uh, I know where to put the bolts to make sure they don't get mixed up. Uh, you know, I found with the KLR, man, every time I do work on this thing, there's 8 million bolts I've got to take off and store somewhere, make sure I get them back in the right places. So I like to make these little cardboard templates. Got the valve cover off. It's working. Um, just a tip. Oh, that's just for me moving this stupid valve cover over the top. Um, one thing you want to be, be cognizant of, I couldn't get the valve cover out. Uh, there was a big wiring harness right here, this particular one right here that was blocking it. And I had to uncut the zip tie and uh, hold it up out of the way to get the valve out, valve cover off. So that's uh, kind of what was going on there. Those marks are from me trying to get the, it's probably too dark, but I'm trying to get the valve cover off. But just don't uh, don't force it. It'll come out. It's tight, but it'll come out. I did have to take off. Um, get flashlight. There is an engine mount bracket. In his video, Tim Two Wheels talks about uh, taking this bracket off. I did. It's only three bolts. Fairly straightforward. Pretty easy. I've done loosened it up before, but hopefully it'll go back on easily enough. But yeah, so far so good. Next step is to go ahead and check the clearance. Went ahead and set the engine to top dead center. If you look at these two marks. 
the lighting's bad, sorry. Hang on, let me fix that. All right, so top dead center has these marks painted on. The arrows have to go, the arrows that are on the uh, sprockets have to go forward. And then also, if you look down in that hole, there's a little mark, a blue line that lines up with the bottom of this out, this little um, tube. And it's got a line, there's a blue mark right there. That's how you know you're at top dead center. Like I said, guys, this ain't a how-to video. I'm just kind of giving you updates as I go. Um, that tin two wheels video is very, very good. I recommend that if you're going to do this yourself. It's not, so far, it's not too terrible. I just want to make sure I get the measurements right. All right. Can't read my chicken scratch there, but um, there it is. There's the valves. Um, you can see the exhaust and intake specs here. Um, 0.15 to 0.25 for the exhaust and the intake is 0.1 to 0.2. So, uh, I've got some, so on the exhaust side, which is the front, the left one is at 1.15, the right one is at 0.13. So the right one is out of spec and the left one is, is just at the very bottom of the spec. So I'm probably going to order shims for both of those. Uh, on the intake, the left one is at 0.10. And the right one is at 0.13. So I think the right one actually is probably closer to 0.14. I couldn't get um, the 0.15 feeler gauge would go in there, but it was uh, it was kind of tight. So I'm thinking that uh, go ahead and, and maybe leave that one. Uh, it's probably right around 0.14, which is kind of right somewhere in the middle there. It's not bad. And then the left one on the... Uh, Intake side is 0 0.10 right at the very bottom. So I'll probably end up I'll probably end up ordering oops sorry guys. I'll probably end up ordering some shims for those at least three. Um, which is a good thing I checked, man. I you know I, I was really dreading this job. Uh so far it's been it's been okay, but the real work comes when I gotta take the the cams out and uh replace the shims. So we'll see. I'll go do some cipher and get my hands and my uh, shoes and socks off so I can make some, do some math here, calculate uh, what size shims I need. But for now, uh, I may just make this, uh, wrap this video up right here. Um, or I might make it all one video. I don't know. We'll see. But I do have to put a cover uh, over the bike and over the, uh, particularly over the, the engine that's going to sit open there. I'm going to throw a nice clean rag over the top of that and make sure that, uh, that it's buttoned up. So, more to come on the valve check. The check itself is done. Like I said, I gotta get the shoes and socks off and do some math. Poor Tanner. He's got the cone of shame on. Looking longingly at the outside. He wants to run, poor guy. It's <laughs> the most pitiful thing I've ever seen. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> and there she still sits. All right, so uh, there's the KLR. Uh, I'll do a quick walk around. But uh, basically today is the 24th of uh, March to 2020. It's a Tuesday. I started this project uh, a little over a week ago on Sunday and Monday of last week. I ordered the parts on Monday um, and selected two-day shipping with the hopes that I would have it done by the weekend, this past weekend. And obviously with the world situation, um, Things got diverted somewhere in FedEx and packages in Indianapolis right now on its way to me now. So I should have the parts tomorrow. I'm hoping uh, to finish it up. I've had it covered, as you saw earlier, for the, the past week. There's the timing chain hanging there. Everything open, ready to go back together. Uh, the shims are ordered. They were a little bit out of spec. But uh, not terrible, but they were def one of them was definitely out of spec. So I'm looking forward to getting those in and making sure I didn't screw something up, get the bike back together. But I'm in business. Shims have arrived. Better late than never, I always say. Now we got to see if we can put this thing back together the right way. It's been a while. Like I said, uh, parts were delayed because of the national crisis. Or the worldwide crisis, I should say. 
So, uh, I know, I should be doing other things. This is stuck at home, and uh, this is as good a project as any. Hopefully, uh, the video will provide you a little bit of distraction at the least. But uh, hopefully, I remember how this thing goes back together. If not, I may be calling some people. But anyway, there's all the bits and pieces. I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off and start putting it back together. All right, new shims are in. These are the old ones. I have to label everything or I forget. So, um, new shims are in. Uh, put the new ones in with the writing side down. They weren't engraved like these were. These were engraved, the old ones were engraved, and they had a, a mark, uh, or they were number side up. I put these number side down so when the camshaft's rolling across the top, it won't wipe the number off, and I'll have to get them a chronometer and all that garbage next time I do this. Um, so, that's it. They're in. Now i got to get everything back together. Uh, put a coat of oil on those before I stuck them in there. Uh, put a coat of oil on the cans when I go to put those back in. Get everything lined back up and then I'll, I'll take some more video. Alright, it's a couple days later. Um, got sidetracked with some yard work by the wife. Uh, I had cutting down some trees and bushes and all that good stuff. So I got the valve cover back on. Uh, started to put the plastics back together. To get the gas tank on there, I'll, I'll give it a, a kick over and see how it runs. But uh, overall, not too terrible. So far, I mean, the engine may explode when I turn it on, so we'll see. But, um, you know, with everything going on with, a, with COVID, um, parts were delayed getting here, but they got here, which is, I appreciate that, so that's awesome. But uh, it's been a good distraction, good project to work on. So if, uh, well, I won't say if you're debating me on it, uh, go ahead and do it, but let me, well, maybe after I start it up, huh? We'll see. But anyway, stay tuned. All right, moment of truth. Got the gas tank back on, front plastics. Uh, got the carb hooked back up. So it's got fuel. Hopefully the motor won't blow up, so let's give this a try. I'm almost afraid to do this. I'm sure it'll be fine. It says everyone before the big disaster. All right, hang on, sorry for the bad camera angle. Doesn't have any gas in the car probably right now. Oh, look at that. It started. Hadn't been started in like a week and a half. Beauty, eh? Alright, that does it for me, boys. I uh, hope you're all taking care of yourselves, taking care of your families. Uh, look out for each other. Take care of yourself and wash your hands, all that good stuff, all the CDC rules or whatever rules are in your country. And uh, hopefully, we'll all be through this soon and out there on the bikes again, camping and riding the trails. So, Godspeed, everybody. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>